<sighs> All right, let's just get this over with. Three months of winter coolness and awesome holidays. We kept our hoopsies warm at home, time off from work to play. There aren't that many episodes in season one that are worth coming back to, at least in my opinion. Friendship is Magic Part 1 and Ticket Master are two that come to mind so far, and this one is the third that is really worth coming back to. Supposedly, winter is about to end in Equestria, and as such, the civilians of Ponyville have to clean up winter? Alright, I feel like I should give a little bit of context behind that. You see, equestrian weather and nature in general works very differently from the nature in our world. Unlike our world, where nature causes the weather to constantly shift, in Equestria the weather is controlled by the ponies, the Pegasi to be more specific. There's an actual weather station in Cloudsdale where they schedule the weather per day very carefully and the Pegasi adjust said weather accordingly. We've already seen that happen in Look Before You Sleep where the Pegasi are setting up a storm. Ponyville operates in this exact manner cranked all the way up to 11. You see, Ponyville was founded by a group of earth ponies who had to literally clean up Ponyville by hoof. That means all the snow, all the ice, they had to replant their crops, wake up all the animals from hibernation, etc. And because Ponyville was founded by Earth Ponies, the so-called winter wrap-up has become an annual tradition. And this time, Twilight Sparkle is going to join in on the fun. Now, Twilight is still relatively new to Ponyville, and as such, she's very excited to take part in the winter wrap-up. So much so that she actually wakes up around midnight, clearly being unable to sleep from all the excitement. Which is honestly just another level of adorable. She walks all around Winter Wrap Up trying to look for something that she could be a part of, only to fail horribly at all of the activities. You would think that Winter Wrap Up would be a piece of cake for her, considering that she has gosh darn magic. And pretty powerful magic at that, as we've seen in Friendship is Magic Part 2 and in Ticketmaster. Well, there's one small caveat. Remember when I said that Ponyville was founded by Earth Ponies? Well, Earth Ponies don't really have any magical abilities at all in this universe, which means that the civilians of Ponyville had to clean up winter with their bare hooves. And because this was made into a tradition, every new generation since has continued to clean up winter with their bare hooves, regardless if they had magic or not. The only exception, of course, are the Pegasi because they have to control the clouds during winter wrap-up, but that's about it. It goes without saying that Twilight isn't having that easy a time with any of these activities. Nearly every episode we've seen since Friendship is Magic Part 1 had Twilight perform some sort of magic trick. Levitation, teleportation, all the crap that happened in Bosebusters, and now all of a sudden she has to fit in with literally no magic at all. What comes from this is one heck of a fun little endeavor. Twilight is an adorable little bean in this, wanting to fit in so badly that she manages to suppress herself from using her magic at all. As much as she can at least. And her actions don't come without consequence either, as she does cause Ponyville to fall behind schedule. A lot behind schedule. I mean, just look at this catastrophe! The ice scorers made the ice chunks too big to melt! The nest designer is horrendously behind. We need several hundred, and she's only made one! And don't get me started on all the clouds still in the sky, the icicles in the trees. This isn't good. Not at all! Oh yeah, I forgot to mention there's a deadline to this, and they are literally doing this all a whole day before winter. Yeah, I don't know why either. I like how Winter Wrap Up puts Twilight in a situation where she has to adapt to traditions of Ponyville that simply won't allow for any magic to be used. A concept that Twilight is visibly struggling with. But more importantly, it allows her to realize that she doesn't have to join in on any of these activities to be useful. She realizes that she made a massive mistake and aims to fix it by helping Ponyville to organize and give them all ideas to possibly clean up winter more efficiently. And lo and behold, it actually ends up being a massive success with winter being cleaned up in time for spring and Twilight getting her own special position in winter wrap-up. Also, after this, I probably should get this earworm out of my head. I strongly believe in the saying that first impressions last a lifetime. And I'll say this from the get-go, this was not a good first impression. 
Remember that clip I played at the beginning of this episode where Apple Bloom was, for lack of a better word, acting like a spoiled brat? That is essentially what the entirety of Call of the Cutie is like. This is the first of a whole series of episodes where Apple Bloom is trying to figure out what her special talent is or what her call in life is so that she can earn her own cutie mark. Now, let's pause for a moment here and have a little chat about cutie marks. They are these little symbols on ponies' flanks that symbolize a pony's special talent or their call in life. Ponies get these at any given time they manage to find either one of those. Their cutie marks would often tie them to a certain activity or job that they would end up doing for the vast majority of their lives. Apple Bloom is taught this in class and she is one of the very few fillies here who doesn't have a cutie mark and are feeling very insecure about the fact that she's surrounded by many other fillies in class who do have cutie marks. We get to spend a full 22 minutes on her desperately trying to make many attempts of finding her true call in life all the while being very annoying about it. Now, I am willing to acknowledge that, yes, this is the very first episode we get to spend with her, and yes, she needs time to develop. But this is just too much. Excitement is one thing, but there's also whatever the hell this is. I mean, I'm all for enthusiastic characters and all. One of my all-time favorite characters of Friendship is Magic is Pinkie Pie, but I have my limits. I'm sorry, but if you exceed Pinkie Pie levels of enthusiasm, that's a problem. Uh, should I talk about them yet? No, no, I think I'll wait for that for another day. There's something more important going on in this episode. Those being the actual activities that Apple Bloom actually tries to get her cutie mark. She tried becoming an athlete, baking, uh, she tried to get some magical help from Twilight, but nothing that she tries seems to work very well. Or is actually fun to watch, to be honest. You would think that any of these would at the very least be somewhat fun to watch. But unfortunately, that just isn't the case here. These scenes drag on quite a lot longer than I feel they really should be, and... You can really tell that the writers didn't quite know what exactly to do with this idea. I understand that it had to start somewhere and that this arc gets better in future episodes, but this just was not a good start for her story arc. However, this episode does bring up something very important for the future. That being that we also get to meet two other characters by the name of Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo. We don't get to know that much about these two in this episode yet, other than that they are on the same boat as Apple Bloom, in that they don't have a cutie mark themselves either. And as such, the three of them start their own club, specializing in finding their cutie marks that they call the Cutie Mark Crusaders. And thus, the Cutie Mark Crusaders are born with many more episodes on the way. And to be more specific, we have many more much better episodes than this on the way. Now this one I've been really looking forward to, to covering in the Ponython. Not because it's that amazing of an episode, as a matter of fact, it's pretty flawed, but because this was the first episode that I ever saw of this show. Applejack and Rainbow Dash have one very neat thing in common, being very competitive with each other, which often leads to some very fun scenarios. They already had some sort of competition in Ticketmaster, but it was very brief and it didn't really go anywhere. Fallweather Friends is the first episode where their competitiveness takes charge in full force. This can be summed up as My Little Pony Olympics. Applejack and Rainbow Dash compete in a bunch of rodeo events. Very simple story with not that much going on that I can really talk about. Most of what could be said about this pretty much speaks for itself. You can pretty much all see it on screen right here. Unlike a lot of the activities in Look Before You Sleep or Call of the Cutie, for example, the events here are mostly put in these little montages that don't take up that much longer than they need to. And they generally, quite frankly, are really fun to watch. Most of the episode is very character driven, as Rainbow Dash constantly cheats in many of these events that no pony besides Applejack seems to notice. They eventually make an agreement that in the last event called the Running of the Leaves that Dash ties her wings to her back 
so that she cannot cheat at it. Basically, they gotta have a race through the woods so that all of the leaves fall down from the trees. Obviously, this is another reference to Equestria's weather antics, and Ponyville sticking with its very interesting traditions that we've talked about in Winter Wrap-Up. The running of the leaves takes up over half of the episode, and for a darn good reason. Much like all of the events that came before, the race is incredibly fun to sit through, with Dash and AJ constantly being neck a neck with each other, with a couple of roadblocks here and there, most of those being set up by either one of them, or by nature itself. Throw a little bit of slapstick in there and you got a really, really, really fun race. With all that being said, there is one small issue that I feel like I should mention right now. This is an example of an episode where Twilight Sparkle is being involved with the plot, where she really has no business actually being involved with the plot. With her giving Dash and AJ some lectures here and there and Spike being the announcer for some reason, this is a constant problem that consists for the entirety of season 1. You see, Twilight Sparkle every episode has to write a letter to Princess Celestia regarding a certain friendship lesson that she's learned in that episode. Which means that she would literally be shoehorned into every episode regardless if she really should be there or not. The writers do try to make sense of it by somewhat explaining why she's there. Like for this episode where they claim that Twilight is simply there to be an arbitrator? And yet she barely is in the episode at all aside from a couple of lectures. Oh, and she somehow took fifth place in the race. Which is really funny when you consider how incredibly slow she went. Other than that though, Fall Weather Friends is a really solid episode that I really enjoyed rewatching after all this time. Yeah, it's a very simple episode, but sometimes that's just the kind of thing that I enjoy. While this episode wasn't all that special or big, it was at the very least fun to watch. And in all honesty, that's all I could possibly ask for in an episode of Friendship is Magic. Okay, I feel like I should explain a little something about this. Out of all of the characters on Friendship is Magic, particularly the main six, Rarity is in all honesty my least favorite. I was never that big of a fan of the attitude that she would often have towards other characters. Now you might ask, what attitude? The attitude of a spoiled city person. The kind of person who believes they are on top of everything else and deserve respect. She never reaches the point of being a Karen per se, but she gets a little too close to that level for my liking, particularly in the first season. But admittedly, Suited for Success was most certainly a good step in the right direction for her. This is pretty much a sequel to Ticketmaster, where the main six get themselves ready for the Great Galloping Gala. They already have the tickets, so now they need the dresses to wear. That's where this episode comes in, where Rarity makes an attempt at making the dresses for her and her friends. Okay, let's get the most obvious out of the way. Rarity's song, Art of the Dress, really likes to drag itself out as much as possible. It's basically supposed to be in line with a montage of Rarity making the dresses for her friends. It's a relatively quick montage with a rather good song to match, making the montage much more fun to listen to and to look at. But problems start to arise when you get to the reprise. So after Rarity shows the dresses that she had made for her friends, they don't seem very enthusiastic about it. Which in and of itself is utterly ridiculous because these dresses look absolutely perfect the way they are and they all fit the individual ponies very well, but I digress. In another montage of Rarity making the dresses, we get the reprise of the song. This is where things start to go downhill for me. I'm not gonna say that it completely ruins the episode as the rest of it is very good, but... Uh... You can really tell that they are trying to drag out the song as much as possible. Presumably because they either just didn't have any way to make it more interesting or because they just needed those extra few minutes. 
And it seems like the only way to do it is by making memes out of a song. I guess the point of this is to show that Rarity is getting increasingly stressed as time progresses. But was this really the best way to do it? SpongeBob SquarePants actually did something like that in Fear of a Krabby Patty where SpongeBob gets visibly more insane as time goes on due to him being at work all of the time there. Suited for Success takes that idea, hams it up to 11, makes it longer and turns it into a song that goes on for way too long. But I do realize that Suited for Success is about more than just the song. So let's shift gears for a moment and talk a little bit more about the dresses that she ended up making during the song. They are absolutely atrocious. They are the dresses that her friends wanted Rarity to make, yeah. But looking at them in the fashion show that they are holding to show off these creations, I can only ask... Were they smoking crack up their ass? Surprising literally no one, the fashion show as a result of this was an absolute bomb. And Rarity got humiliated by a hot shot from Canterlot. This results in Rarity having a massive breakdown, which lasts until her friends find a way to get her out of her room by finishing a dress she's been working on and okay i gotta be perfectly honest with you here i personally don't care much for the story of this suited for success is a great episode that has done wonders for her character developments especially when compared to look before you sleep and her getting a second chance at having another fashion show to recover her career was a nice touch with beautiful animation but this just isn't for me you see i've always been more of a fan of episodes like fall weather friends which has a lot more going on in there and is all in all a bit more fun than something like this at least to me suited for success is designed to give rarity a moment to shine give her lots of character development and it's part of the great galloping gala story arc and of course it's all about making the dresses i personally just don't find that very interesting of a story and the song didn't really help at all but i also gotta be fair this episode is very good and I cannot deny that. Not quite one of my favorites, but I gotta give it credit where credit is due. And its efforts certainly won't go unnoticed. Okay, I've got a funny story to tell you. I had a little chat with somebody the other day about my favorite character in Friendship is Magic, and they were very surprised to learn that my favorite character is Fluttershy of all characters, while they associate me better with Pinkie Pie, because of my very high levels of energy and optimism that presumably matches the optimism that Pinkie Pie shows. Rewatching this next episode, I kind of get where they're coming from. There's one thing you should know before we get into this episode, and I'm going to be very blunt about this. If you do not like Sponge on the Run because of its really bizarre and stupid story, you are not going to like this episode either. We learned that Pinkie Pie can predict the future through some weird body spasms she has, the most notable being Twitchy Tail, which means something is going to drop on some pony's head. Twilight, in utter disbelief, is going to analyze this phenomenon called Pinkie Sense and tries to, well, make sense of it. Now, you may be wondering where the comparison with Sponge on the Run came from. Well, it has come to my attention that there is no shortage of people who criticize this movie for its stupid, nonsensical story. For these kinds of things, you have to be able to keep an open mind about it. Don't take it too seriously. If you are incapable of doing that, then Sponge on the Run and Feeling Pinky Keen just simply aren't made for you. Pinkie Pie in general is a character you will either love or hate, depending on whether or not you can handle this much energy in one sitting. She talks in a very high-pitched voice, tends to jump all over the place, and in general is just overly happy with life. And often little silly things like this happens where she does things that don't make sense and you just have to accept the fact that this is just how things are. Twilight Sparkle has to go through the process of learning this lesson the hard way but not before she went overly analyzing the crap out of Pinky Sense in a desperate attempt to understand it. And she has a very smug look on her face while doing it. What I personally love about all this is the situation that spawns from her disbelief. Pinky tries to explain Twilight what her various body spasms mean in one scene. 
But ultimately, it's all a waste of time. Because Twilight Aldright refuses to believe any of this. And instead, she decides to literally hook Pinky up to a machine to find any activity in a scientific way. And when she couldn't get any good results out of it, she just spies on her for analysis purposes. Which would result in hilarity. Twilight being attacked by bees, dropping into AJ's apple cellar, and getting multiple things dropped on her head. I know some people would argue with me on this, but I think she totally deserves all of that. Hear me out on this. From the very beginning, Twilight has been acting like a bit of a jerk to Pinky, hooking her up to a machine, constantly mocking Pinky's sense, spying on her, her trying to look for a logical reason why Pinky has all of these body spasms that presumably predict the future is just asking for trouble. You could argue the beast might have been a bit too much, but it gave a little bit of extra slapstick. I think it's fine. And later in the episode, we got an epic chase sequence with a freaking Hydra. Okay, this is starting to get really weird. Needless to say, this whole story is just kind of a mess. We've seen some crazy shit happen before this, like everything from the Everfree Forest and Winter Wrap Up. Then we get to feeling Pinky Keen, which is just a completely new level of insanity. And in all honesty, while well, Fall Weather Friends and Winter Wrap Up were both great episodes in their own right, this is easily one of the most fun episodes of the entire show. 